the day after election, and we're here with David Young, guy from the Lulac Political Letter this morning, as always. He's celebrating uh, the 11th year for the Political Letter, also a million yes. page views, right? So yep. congratulations wow. there. Uh, of course, let's talk about the difference between the election we saw yesterday and what we saw back in November. The clear-cut difference, no presidential election, but why do you see such a different turnout for what we saw yesterday? Well, I think, first off, candidates don't have the money to spend, so a lot of it's grassroots, a lot of it's social and also the fact that it's a local election and for whatever reason, which is astounding to me, people really don't get excited about this. Um, my wife is the judge of elections in Wilkesbury. Last year they had um, they had a 70% turnout. Yesterday they had an 11% turnout. Let me ask you this. Why are they not getting excited? Mainly because it's not sexy. It's not top okay. of mind. It's not like, you know, you don't have rallies. You don't have people, you know, uh, interest groups calling each other's names sure. and the whole bit. It's local. It's your neighbor. And a lot of times you're thinking, well, they could handle it. And it's just one of those things where people have to get involved in a local election because it's grassroots. It's the people that are, are going to be making their decisions, their taxes. And what happens is when like a tax increase goes locally or you know something happens to the school district, it's like, wow, why is this happening? How did these guys get in? Well, that was because they set out the election. I would think it takes more research as well. In some of these cases, you're talking about nine different candidates yeah. vying for five spots. How do you go about making sure you're doing your research for some names that you might not recognize? And that depends on the whether it's a political junkie or if a person has a family member in the race. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times your average voter, the top of mind is just not there. So it takes a lot more work for a local election than it does for a presidential election. Presidential election is either or. Sure. All right, David Yonka, you're, don't move. We're going to hang out with you all morning long and answer all your questions. Of course, if you have any questions for David, you can uh, find us on Facebook. Yeah, there you go. Let us know. Okay. All right, it's the day after election day. That means one thing. David Yonkai from the Lulac Political Letter joins us. Thank you for having me here today. Thanks for being here this morning. Let's talk about that last race that we just mentioned, looking for the first female judge in Wayne County, cross-filing. What's that all about, and why would a candidate be uh, encouraged to do so? Well, it's very advantageous for a candidate to cross-file. Cross-file basically means that a candidate, uh, even though they're a Democrat, could actually file on the Republican side. So the judgeship race in um, that county, um, they that particular candidate has a leg up. So in other words, like cross filing essentially means that a Democrat, okay, could file on the Republican side and a Republican could file on the Democratic side. If they get enough votes on both sides, then they don't have to face a general election Ele election contest. Now, how all this started was in 1971 when we started to elect judges and magisterial candidates, they decided to make it bipartisan so that they allowed judicial candidates to cross file. Now, other candidates could do the same thing. Like, say, if you were running for, like, say, mayor of a city, if you were a Democrat, if you decided that there was a weak Republican Party or there was even a strong Republican candidate, you could cross file on the Republican side so that you could win both the nominations. And locally here, Jim Haggerty, who is a Republican, won the Democratic nomination for Kingston Magistrate, and uh, also James Tupper in the Back Mountain was a Republican filed on the Democratic side, and he won on both tickets. So this judge here has a Fort a has a 20 percent lead, so she is going to be walking into election. Sure. Okay. And we are taking questions for you this morning. Oh my heavens! To our, our Facebook page to ask David Yonke what you want to know on this day after Election Day. So we'll ca uh, catch up with you in just a few. Minutes. Okay. All right. So, of course, the day after election, David Yonkai joins us from the Lulac Political Letter this morning. Thanks Happy for to be here. here. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks here. for being here another morning with us. So, of course, we're talking about the uh, Lackawanna District, Lackawanna County District Attorney race, one of the uh, hottest races getting the most uh, most attention so far this election season. What do you think came out of this between Gene Tallarico and Shane Scanlon? What are your thoughts? Well, in 2015, Andy Gerbola became judge, and the court en banc uh, basically appointed uh, Shane Scanlon, and um, Tallarico got passed over, and that made for a huge primary battle between the two of them and Tallarico uh, actually won convincingly because uh, there were a lot of people who felt that uh, he should have been the DA. Okay, now obviously they did not debate. Did yeah. that hurt or help them? That had to actually hurt Scanlon hurt because Scanlon? first off your average man in the street, woman in the street, person in the street says, oh my heavens, the lawyer not wanting to talk? And the way that he basically 
declined the debate was he sent a letter to various media outlets and it was a very lawyer, lawyerly letter and it just basically didn't give people a good feeling about his openness even though he's been a very good district attorney. Well Scanlon had said that he did not have time to clear his schedule on something. Right. But you know that time to clear the schedule I mean it's a debate this is your only shot because I think that if he had done that maybe he could have presented a better case for and himself. You know, the, this is something that Tallarico really jumped on as well yeah, uh, in all exactly. forms of media. Do you think it was a talking point for him that really resonated? Absolutely with the absolutely he gave him a lot of fodder for it definitely and one thing I want to bring up is that um, the opponent in the fall is going to be Mark Powell and he's the Democrat mm -hmm. and he has a couple of challenges ahead of him even though the Democrats have a huge registration lead in Lackawanna County the last time there was a Democratic district attorney in Lackawanna County was 48 years ago wow. in 1969 wow. so All there right. have been so in a democratic county there's been nothing but republican district attorneys very interesting okay. all right david john kai from the lulac political letter uh, how can they check that out if people want lulac to political letter dot blogspot dot com 3500 editions a million page views we're still plugging away all, all right. right thanks for being here this morning thank you we'll be right back